So yeah, the cross country uh, XC70, 2007 XC70 at a, almost 174,000 miles. It's time for the oil trap PCV replacement on this car. It looks like the oil flew off the bottom of the box or, or from the oil dipstick at the base and crapped all over the uh, front of the oil pan. It's kind of nasty. There was even some blow by on the just on the seam for the oil pan just above the oil cooler and then the two seals just below them below the oil cooler i'd actually wipe that off it was kind of fresh oil sitting there from uh, before i took the photo so you didn't get to see that but um yeah it was there um doesn't look like it blew the seals apart but clearly created some pressure so hopefully the seals are still good once we get it replaced and it's not putting a bunch of excess crank pressure in the system so i ordered those parts from ipd that means youtube I get to pull the entire intake off this car. Um, yeah, I did that on the V70, on Ragnar, the V 2.4 turbo V70 in October or November of 2021, so a little over two years ago, or right at two years ago. And um, uh, this car is basically the same thing, so it's not going to be too much harder now that I know how to do it. Uh, but that gives me some more content to create for you guys. I had created a uh, oil trapped video on the V70, kind of like with three or four tips of how I did it. Now we'll do a video uh, coming up on how we actually did this. Uh, I'm going to change the entire system. I'm going to start pulling parts off of here tonight because IPD is sending me the Volvo OEM. I also ordered for this car the Phenolic uh, throttle body spacer. It just keeps heat coming from the block through the intake manifold in underneath to the throttle body itself and just helps prolong their life uh, from the excess heat coming off the engine itself because um, those that's an expensive part the electronic throttle ETM electronic throttle module that's like a thousand bucks so that's not something you want to have getting too hot and broken gives me an excuse to clean it we just did that on the V70 just posted that video last week so um, yeah we'll do it on this car as well it's never thrown the 228 I think code um, but we'll go ahead and do it while it's off and put that finale throttle, throttle body on there. Get the, the current plan is um, this car is scheduled to go to dynamic for the di further diagnosis on the variable valve timing, figure out what's going on and why the car won't run. Um, it isn't running long enough to generate any codes. So yeah, it's beyond my abilities. I'm not messing with timing on a Volvo. Going to take that to dynamic. Um, I plugged in Vita. There are no codes popping up tied to anything it's not running long enough to generate any um so it's kind of interesting um and then uh yeah since i had, it had the uh, p0027 code when it first died and we towed it home and we cleared that to see if it would run and it's never come back uh and we cleared we replaced that solenoid anyway so that's where we're at dynamic will get that um hopefully next week is the time i called them today gonna get it on the schedule for next week gotta tow it up there but before I send it, I'm going to replace this uh, PCV oil trap system. So I'm going to start pulling parts tonight. And that'll be on another video series. And we'll get this thing too dynamic for their repairs. Follow up and uh, stay tuned. We'll get this thing back on the road. Well, we're way underway for Operation XC70. Take a lot of parts off. I do not remember loosening this up at all. But when I loosened up the uh, uh, charge air pipe over the engine pipe, um, that came out. On its own. Like, I didn't even have to pull up on it. I was actually trying to disconnect it over here, and it came off the back. I didn't do that. That was never tight. That was really interesting. I don't even know that it was in. Um, that's kind of bizarre. So, um, yeah. Going to keep working on this. I'm not sure what the heck that was all about. So, um, yeah. Pulling parts off. So, what's off so far? The over-the-engine charge pipe is off. I pulled the vacuum lines off, disconnected from the air inlet from the supercharge or from the intercooler coming into the throttle body underneath the intake manifold. Uh, took off the air, took out the air filter. It's about, I think it's about 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles away from an air filter change. Um, but look at all that debris. Woo! This one hasn't been open since I changed the air filter on this car. I don't even know when that was. Probably two, three years ago. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to vacuum that out, obviously. We'll dump it out. I'm just going to pull that out of the car because all this needs to come out so I can get in there and work on all of these pipelines. This All, all this stuff is coming. This is going to get replaced. Um, yeah, part of the PCV system. So, yeah, Operation Take a Lot of Parts Off is going to continue. These are such a pain in the butt to get this mass airflow sensor off of these plastic hoses. They just bond on there. I don't even know why we need a clamp. They're, like, so difficult to get off. So, yep, this whole pipe's got to come out of the way because I need to get in back under here to be able to disconnect a banjo bolt for it's a coolant line that runs across the front over to the water pump. 
actually connects on the bottom of the intake manifold too. So got to play with that. Uh, more parts coming off. Operation to remove a lot of parts is continuing. I took the covers off the um, the top cover off the engine, so you can see the um, what are those things called? The uh, I don't even remember what they're called. The um, spark plug wires. What are those things called? Can't remember. Anyway, spark plugs underneath those coils. Coils. One, two, three, four, five on the five cylinders. So there's five coils. This is the PCV line coming back to drop uh, crank crush the bypass back in. Um, but I took off this cover off the fuel reel so you can see the electrical lines, sensors, electrical lines on each one of the, um, uh, these are the fuel injectors. This is the fuel pressure rail. It all comes across here, fuel pressure sensor. There's a Schrader valve here to release the um, fuel pressure that's in the line right now. So you put a, you gotta be really careful when you do that so you don't spray oil or gasoline all over everything. So next up, these are coming off. These electricals are coming off. Sensors coming off this uh, intake cam position sensor. Um, all these cables are coming off. I just remembered when I did this on the V70, this is the turbo control module. This is the OEM one. When I did this on the V70 Ragnar, I actually replaced this with the IPD high performance one and changed all of these lines. Um, I do remember getting back in there to get this off is a pain in the ass back at the turbo. So this is the air inlet coming from the air filter box all the way back to the turbo to pressurize. It is hard to get to. I think I did it from the bottom. I don't remember. This one's, I, to my knowledge, has never been off. So uh, yeah, this can be fun. We'll dig deeper. Funny new discovery. Disconnected all of the injector lines. One, two, three, four, five. Those are pretty simple. Disconnected the pressure sensor and the camp position sensor. So that's all that's left on this line is over here for the electricals. And it's on the block just above the water pump. And I was looking at this, trying to figure out how the heck do I disconnect that? Do you see anything funny about that? Yeah, me too. So normally you take a little screwdriver in here and you'd have a little push down right there, a little tab to release. And I realized it's not there, it's broken. So I actually just reached in here and pulled. Look at that, it's completely missing its lock doesn't exist anymore it's just sitting in there but it's been sitting in there a very long time so yeah this is all coming out of the way now we'll disconnect this harness over here in a little minute and get these all out of the way all right this is where it starts to get stinky this is the fuel line coming from the fuel pump all the way through up from the back of the car from the fuel tank fuel pump sends the pressure up to the uh, fuel rail so I had just take an old plastic bag this is an old some sort of a part I think that's an old Toyota part uh, bag and then I just stick it on top of there and put some rubber bands on it so I'm not smelling the fuel that's remaining in that line. Um, this reeks but you got to make sure you want to make sure that you have all one, two, three, four, five of these little rubber grommets. That one is actually broken on top. That is not good. That is gonna be a problem. Oh boy! Yeah, because that is actually cracked. Yeah. Oh boy. Going to see what we got to do about that. I don't know. That's interesting. I might be buying one new injector. Going to have to figure that out because I don't remember these little things on my other one. I just remember the seals, these little rubber O-rings, and it's going to come with five new ones in the kit. You want to make sure, if you don't have them, that you look down in here and make sure they didn't drop or they didn't get caught in there because they're kind of hard to pull out and then they pop. Sometimes they're stuck and you just got to reach in there with a little uh, pointer and pull them apart, get them out of there. But yeah, this is capped off. This reeks. This has still got gasoline in it. It's just no longer under pressure. So um, we're going to leave them all together for right now. i got to figure out what am I doing with this because that, that just might be like a little seal that I might be able to get. Maybe it comes with five new ones of those. I don't remember those on the V70 having these little hard caps on the tips. So maybe it comes with new ones. I will look into that and find out. That seems to be different from the 07XC70 and the V70 from 2002. All right, this is getting out of the garage because it reeks full of fuel. Let's just stick it outside and let it evaporate. Data on operation, remove a lot of parts. The intake from the intercooler to the throttle body. Throttle body's still sitting in there. You can just see the edge of electronic controls here where my finger's at. Uh, here it is. It sits in there like that coming out of the intercooler. You can see some oil in there, some blow-by oil Ugh. from the uh, turbo. Seems like more than I was expecting, but I don't, I've don't. i never had this off. I don't know if this has ever been off. 
in my I bought this car in 2019 so four years I don't think this has ever been off to my knowledge so we'll get this cleaned up yeah that's gross yeah yeah YouTube I'm also shooting this video so I can remember how to put this shit back together because there's a lot coming off and not a lot of directions so um, I just wanted to see where this is going I know this goes down underneath into a T right there there's a vacuum line on it, it goes over to here so that's coming off. I'm not sure if that's included in my PCV pipe system or not. I don't think it is. We'll see, but I'm gonna take that off. Um, I do need to um, drop some coolant out of here um, because there is a line. This line back here has coolant coming around the back. There's, there's a couple of places where we have coolant. We have a takeoff line coming off the thermostat housing on the bottom right there. And it comes up and mounts upside down and backwards in a banjo bolt right here god that's hard to get to the v70 has this uh, power steering line coming straight across the top this one is right where you need to be so i don't know how i'm going to figure out to get around all that so uh banjo bolt's gonna have to come off that is a pain in the butt to get back on um i have to kind of completely relearn it on this because this car has the hydraulic line in the way um hopefully i don't have to remove that that's a pain in the butt too. So uh, these lines are gonna get replaced. The banjo bolt here, and I know there is a banjo bolt. This all comes through here. What's interesting is this is not insulated. Usually these are an insulated pipe. There's a little piece of insulation, but usually that whole thing from Volvo is in a foam thing. So this, I'm guessing this has been replaced. Um, but back around here, and all this has to come off. This, I still gotta figure out how to get this off eventually. Um, there's another banjo bolt back there that's got to come off. So I know when I remove that banjo bolt, coolant comes out of the top of the block. So got to, I'm just going to drain it down. Last time I made a mess when I did that. So we're going to drain it first. Well, that was a gusher. This car has this thing. When you reach up in there on the bottom of the radiator, let's pull that away so you can see it. Got that? Yeah, it's like a little finger thing, but you can't even get to it with fingers even when you take the covers off because it's way up here. And you can't really get to it, can't get a finger in there. So I used some needle nose, flat needle nose. Just gently did it because it is plastic. And it's just this guy with two... Can you see that? Is it going to focus? Let's see if I can get you to focus. There it is. Two O-rings on it and this little top. So I ended up draining the entire thing. Going to replace all the coolant now because... I am not confident I'm going to get that in there correctly with uh, fluid running out and trying to do it fast. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do it with no coolant, and then we'll replace all new coolant. I was honestly hoping that I could take the throttle body off after I remove the intake manifold, but I can't get to this guy. Actually, I could leave that connected and just... I can't even get into the bolt spacing because of this line. I'm going to take off the throttle body first, upside down and backwards. Oh, there it is, on my fingers. Four bolts, they should be tens. That's what they are on the V70. Hopefully they are the same on this one. We will pull this baby off. Operation remove even more parts. Took the friend shroud out. This car is even easier to get out than the V70 was. I don't know what caused me so much problem on the V70, but it had to be like pivoted and come in at an angle. And then I screwed up and had to pop the uh, radiator coolant hose. This one came out super easy. Two eight millimeters up top, bam, straight off the top. Piece of cake. Now I can get in here with a lot more arm movement and get this throttle body off. Piece of cake. All right, there's the four bolts, the big long black ones. That uh, they're eight millimeters that hold in the throttle body upside down backwards. I'm getting really good at that, going upside down backwards and not switching my racket, my ratchet. But remember the V70 through a P0228 throttle body correlation code, and I cleaned it all up, thinking that's what it was. Look how freaking dirty this thing is. That is gnarly. The V71 has never, ever, 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 ever looked that bad. I mean, then we have oil running down right here. Um, yeah, that is disgusting. We are going to clean this up. I can't believe this thing was still running. Um, it does have a different system, so maybe that's the correlation. Um, on the V70, there are two sensors. One was the intake air temperature, and one was the mass air pressure sensor side by side and on this car let's see if i can find it going around i'll light it up go backwards yes yeah, you see where the air intake ugh, that is disgusting 
disgusting. That's where it's coming out of the intercooler. Just above it, right there, those wires, it has one connector right there, and I think it does it all. I think it does the uh, intake air temperature and mass air pressure. Does it right there, coming out of the um, intercooler, instead of getting all fouled up down here in the line, does it on top, right there. So maybe that's why it was better. I don't know. Yeah, sorry about the uh, confusion there. Upside down, backwards, twisting around, making you vomit. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a virtual reality experience here. So that's a lot coming off. Now I should be able to get underneath there and be able to get back here and get to Banjo Bolt because that is off. That's going to get cleaned up before it ever goes back in. That's, that is absolutely disgusting. Voila! Pretty much one can of throttle body cleaner later. And the inside, man, that stuff is hard to get off. Takes lots of doses of uh, the throttle body cleaner and then as soon as it evaporates, it is re-solidified carbon and it is... It's a pain in the ass, to be quite honest. But that is so much better. Um, yeah, we'll clean out the outside of it. I'll get this thing all cleaned up. It'll look almost new. It'll start to look like the $1,000 piece of equipment that it is. Because without it, none of this can happen. None of it. Well, it might not happen anyway, because it wasn't running before I took it off. All right, so my 10-inch extension with a 10 millimeter to get to the troublesome manif intake manifold bolt is just, if you can see the silver going through... Come up here, come across the top. See the silver? There's the bolt. So it's just a little bit off square. It's harder on this car. The spacing isn't the same and the um, alternator seems bigger. On my V70, I could get in there direct. And it was pretty much a straight shot. So I might try it with a little knuckle in there and see if that helps out on that angle. Um, but I can get it on there. I just don't know if I'm going to strip that bolt. Even more parts are off. The Volvo XC70, look at that. The manifold came off. That inside one, that little bolt just stays. You see it down there by the thermostat? Right here. It doesn't have to come all the way out because we have a little groove in the bottom here. This one also doesn't have to come all the way out. This one right here, but I did take it out. It sits on the bottom. Uh, so yeah, so we'll get this all cleaned up and put back together. Um, I don't know what the hell's going on with this thing. Look at this. This comes down to here. This isn't even on tight. Um, it's on with zip ties. Literally freaking zip ties I don't know I'm this has definitely been replaced or it's been off and put back on and lost some straps but this is uh, not clogged ooh 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 can we get that to focus in there do you see goop that looks nasty so that one goes from the box look at look at all the leakage on the box it is absolutely disgusting this I can slide that on and off like that and this was literally sitting up here on the PCV line coming back to the um, oil trap it was literally just a zip tie it popped right off in my hands so this is crap I don't know what the heck this is but you can see how much this thing has been blown by and leaking crud for quite a while these are actually cramps these are the professional clamp ones so this part might be original um, but um, I don't know what this is I don't know who would zip tie this that's Fucking pathetic. So anyway, we're gonna keep going and start taking stuff off. Banjo bolt is there. Thing is a pain in the butt. It was a 17 millimeter and all I could get to it was the opened end of a wrench. It is so tight sitting on the bottom of the manifold in this space. So uh, yeah, not easy to get to. Gasket, um, on these you just cut it. And on the new one you just trim it. So you can just pop it down there and it'll sit against there like a fork. Um, so yeah, this is going to get done. We'll look in there. We'll get all this cleaned up. Pull some more gunky parts off. And I just noticed another freaking zip tie. Two of them put together to make one connection. This is, what a fucking mess. These are original, these are like dealer clampers with zip ties. What the heck? I'm pretty sure all of this is going to be all coming together with one of these on it I, what the heck this to me is different because mine was always insulated in rubber like this entire thing was covered in rubber so i don't know why just this tube i wonder if it got broken and they just replaced this plus that with zip ties that might be original that's gross get my blue rag stopper down there this is so gross before i start pulling all this uh, oil trap off and all this debris starts falling down that or that little blue rag is stuffed in where the oil dipstick goes so the shaft the little shaft sits up here you run the stick down 
through the shaft. It goes in there and it's supposed to have two O-rings in the bottom. It only had one. The other one was kind of pretty much melted to the block there. I was able to scrape it out with a pick, pull it apart. It was pretty much disintegrated, gone. So yeah, I'm putting that in there before I pull all the, this is all coming apart. And this is gonna drop stuff all over the place and I don't want it down in the clean oil that I just changed last night. Maybe I should have waited. All right, YouTube, I'm calling it quits. I've cleaned this up down in there. So most of what that is, is my, I'm guessing that this has been replaced because I snapped this black line and it is not completely full of carbon. If this was original, it would have been almost completely blocked. Um, this has been replaced. That's that's my guess is this is replaced. What happened I think here is the box was a Volvo. The oil trap box was Volvo. Um, and all these seals were just old, old and gross and nasty. My guess is they replaced this, the line that came up, the one with the zip ties. Uh, two of them with zip ties. This one has zip ties too, if I remember right. I think they replaced... Um, some of them left the box um, because the what happens here is the seals go bad on the back of the box. So it is it is not leaking sludge. There's no sludge like that in the engine. What's happening is the seals are going bad and it's supposed to, the oil trap and vapors separate. The oil's supposed to drain back in in two different places back into the crank or back into the block and go down into the pan. And then it's going to get, any gunk's going to get filtered out. Um, so what's happening here is those seals have gone bad on the back of the oil trap and it's leaked oil and vapor. Um, also this one was down here on the bottom of the dipstick. It was totally cooked. So what's starting to happen is it's leaking oils, residues, and then the road is picking up silt from the road and it's just creating this gunk and then more oil residue, more gunk, more oil residue, more silt, more gunk. Um, in here though, these were, this wasn't completely clogged. Um, I, I used a screwdriver to get most of that out. This one had some stuff in it as well, but they weren't completely clogged. This is not even close to being clogged. These little, this little tiny line always snaps. So might as well get one of these when you're going to replace this because you're going to break it. Unless you're better than me, which is highly probable. Um, but I've broken them twice now. Um, the new ones are much more flexible because they haven't been exposed to the heat. So tomorrow I will work on getting this out. We'll come around this side, get all this out of the way, come in this side, get the uh, coolant line off a of banjo bolt back there. And um, I'll get some degreaser. We'll clean this thing up, make that look better. Um, it's not as bad as it looks, but uh, yeah, that's my guess is that original oil trap and all the original seals to the block were just toast and just letting oil vapors and stuff get past. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. I did, last time I had this in here, because I knew looking up that it was gunky uh, from the bottom doing oil changes, I did do a uh, glove pressure test on this one last time I did the oil change, so 3,800 miles ago, and it sucked. It did not fill the um, glove, so it was still functioning. It was still operating. It just, it's gross. It's time for this thing to get cleaned up and replaced, so um, I don't think we had a PCV... Well, we did some oil back, blowback, so don't know if that's tied to this guy up here or not. Up here, I don't know if that's all tied together, but we did have some leaking oil above the oil cooler on the back of the oil pan. And um, with the two oil cooler seals, uh, that wasn't really gunky, so that was fairly recent. So maybe it had just started to clog. This one was pretty close to being clogged. Uh, this is still open, but yeah. We're gonna get this cleaned up. Back in the garage, it actually is warming up a little bit. It was cold and snowy yesterday, so I stayed inside. I got a notice, big brown truck is de delivering my IPD Volvo. I went to the Volvo OEM uh, PCV breather kit because the um, aftermarket one about, I don't know, 150 bucks cheaper is out of stock on back order. So I wanted to get it faster. So we just went ahead and, hey, bumped this up to OEM. They shipped it out to me. So big brown truck arriving tomorrow. I pulled off the top mount on the um, cross brace. Pulled that off, pulled off the side mount. It was actually missing. The lower bolt is not here anymore. <clears throat> Just had two out of the three. I am going to pull off these uh, variable valve timing or the time, uh, the cam position sensors, intake and exhaust. I'm going to pull those off and just see how dirty they are on the inside if they're leaking or any bypass just because I'm here and it's easy to do. Just a couple, uh, what are these, torques? Two torques on each one. Uh, I'm going to pull those off, take a look in there. I do have to get around to the back of here to get these... Um, 
There's a banjo bolt sitting down underneath here. It'll be easier with this out of the way. And I gotta get to the bottom down here on the inlet tube coming from the air filter after the mass airflow sensor where there is one line inside of here. Gotta get that disconnected and all that comes apart. So uh, yeah. Interesting note, uh, the front one, the intake cover for the cam position sensor has little itty bitties. Um, and the back one has really big ones. Don't know why, but you're definitely not gonna confuse those two with each other. Although you could con confuse these two housings, they look identical. I wonder if they mount the same. Uh, de definitely look identical. Anyway, um, here's what we got. It's not too bad. It looks like the seals are pretty much holding up. There's a little bit of debris down in there underneath. Can you see that? Yeah, we'll kind of wipe that out with a rag, but it's not oily. There's no oil deposit or oil residue in any of these. I'm gonna look online. Because remember with the, um, over with, it was possible when that variable valve timing is going out on the exhaust side that it skips one or two teeth. And I'm curious if I look at these two camshafts to see if I can tell that those are not in alignment. I don't know that I can. Uh, post down below, YouTube, what do you see? Are they right how they're supposed to be? I don't know. All right, YouTube, so you're with me catching you up to date. The banjo bolt is off of right there. I just pulled it out sitting right there. I did drop my copper washer down, but getting two new ones. But I did notice something. Look at this. Let's see. That's the fold back around for the... You can see it wiggling right there. It folds back around where my finger's at. That's the coolant. But check this out. Let's see if this will just come out. It should. Shouldn't, but it is. But I can tell you because I already peeked in there and saw what was going on. I'm blown away by this thing. Once again, just completely blown away. How is this thing running and passing emissions? All right, what I'm looking for is I got this caught. This banjo bolt is caught on the line. All right, hang on. Two, two hands to get that out because the banjo bolt just hooked a little, um, this little sensor line right there. So that thing had just looped around it as it was coming out. But here's what I was pointing at. Do you see any evidence that there has been a clamp on that for years? We've owned this car since July of 2019. It leaked a little coolant as it came out. There's coolant in these uh, banjo lines. Um, since July 2019, actually, the coolant in this line, I think it's coming back around to here. Yeah, coolant in the banjo line. We've owned that car since 2019, July 2019. So that's four years it's been running with no clamps. This goes back to the inlet tube just in front of the turbo. We didn't have one here. We didn't have one there. It's a mess, or not there. It was, uh, came down to, it was this line coming across the top and goes into the top of the breather box. It didn't have one. This had leaked all over the place. I, I, I'm at a loss. I'm at a complete loss how long ago this was done and why it wasn't done correctly. This is uh, completely All right, bizarre. YouTube, post down below. I'm trying to figure out this damn line. I know we got coolant. I still gotta get that hose off. There's one more piece to get off. That bit of hose, I just cut it because I couldn't get access to it with a small screwdriver. So I know we got coolant here at the thermostat housing. This is usually hot coolant coming off the top of the block, going back to the radiator to cool down over here. We have coolant coming back down there on that cop, that cop, bronze colored, copper colored, whatever that is, bronze. It's coming out, comes back, goes into the bottom of the engine on the back side back there below, near the turbo. So, do we have, which way does coolant flow through this damn system? Um, I know it's coming around this banjo bolt up, up by the edge of the manifold. So is it flowing hot across here, hot through here? hot all the way back through this banjo bolt and entering the block on the top to circulate quickly and come back through? Or is it flowing cool side where the coolant comes in and flows back? I think it's probably hot. My guess is hot so it keeps things moving. Why does it need, why does it need to put hot on the, why does it need to put hot on the manifold is it just to keep this thing from crudding up so the oil, any oily residues that get caught in here flow through, fall into the trap box, and as they, the vapors are continuing through here, we just keep them warm? Because this is, this is putting engine gases back into the air inlet tube before the turbo to run it back through to the intake. So that's how it's recirculating it back around. It's pulling this around to the box, comes off the top of the box. Why is there coolant in here? 
That's the mystery to me. I don't understand that part. Are we? Does it flow cool to hot or hot to meet up with the cool coming in from the engine? I'm not sure. Post down there below how this thing damn thing works. All right, before I start cleaning this up, it's so gross. Got some purple degreaser water down in a spray bottle. Um, before I started doing that, I bought a one foot section of light lamp cord. Um, so it's just two sections of electrical cord put together in a housing. Uh, one foot long, I think it cost me 45 cents at the hardware store. Um, it should reach in here. This is on the, this is a junction for the bottom of the oil trap. So oil and the gunk can work its way back into the, into the block and these typically get plugged excuse me, clogged, it's just a channel, and it goes all the way down in, towards um, into the bottom of the oil pan, way down there. This is where the dipstick goes to get into the oil pan, and it's down at the bottom of that. So it goes in a foot. Um, when I was first getting this to go in there, you got to work it and kind of play with it to get it to find its right path down the channel. It wouldn't make it. Kept hitting um, black solid residue, like you saw, that was clogging these up typically. Um, but now it's been pulling out oil. I'm gonna pull it out so you see what's going on live because it does have clean oil in it um, it's still kind of gunky it's still pulling out some debris darkening it up but for the most part that is just new oil so that is good it's making its way all the way in there almost an entire foot so it should be down towards the bottom pushing that through and it should be a clear channel again once it starts running all right operation remove a lot of parts and operation clean shit up are complete look how much better that is it wasn't necessary 100 percent not going to change any of the performance but you heard me talking about the zip ties and the missing clamps and whoever did this last i don't want to be that guy so i clean this up try to find it better than i or try to leave it better than i found it this one makes that really easy because that was absolutely disgusting um, cleaned it up as best I could, uh, about three rounds of some uh, purple half and half water degreaser. Uh, scrubbing it with a little brass uh, brush and a rags. Cleaning it up, uh, blew it out. Got this cleaned out. That was I had these plugged. Uh, the plugs still sitting in here in this one, uh, but they are cleared. I did pull the um, ignition coils, and uh, there was a little bit of oil, very 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 small amounts of oil blowback that had come through there. So this thing had definitely pressurized. Um, yeah, who knows, but at least with it cleaned up, if we start having issues again, we can look up and see where it's coming from and know that it's got a baseline and what is new gunk. So that kind of gives us a um, starting point. Got the manifold cleaned up, ready to go. Got the throttle body cleaned up, even on the outside, kind of cleaned the gunk off of it. It was, you know, pretty, pretty well. It's definitely better than what it was. You saw that it had oil dripping out of it when we uh, first pulled it. So yeah, we are going to be putting this thing back together with the big brown truck showing up tomorrow, and we will uh, be back in business here soon. Hopefully it will run at some point. All right, YouTube, so that's a wrap. That's a wrap on this one completely. Uh, we're going to do this in two parts. So part one was remove a lot of parts and clean shit up. Operation two is put it all back together. So uh, yeah, that'll follow separately. Hopefully, who knows if it's going to run after all this. It still has an appointment next Friday, uh, one week from tomorrow at Dynamic in Longmont to uh, figure out if the variable valve timing thing is bad or not. So there you are. Um, hope you're out there having fun. Be safe. Uh, truly, I am not a mechanic. I'm winging it as I go.